Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Wicked Ones podcast. This is Tara. And this is Jen. What's going on? Not a whole lot. We have another morning recording session going yeah. on. We're bouncing around a lot now. Yeah, morning, I know. Night. Morning, night, weekends, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely different, but fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so what'd you do? I, I haven't seen you in a while. What's, what's your week been like? No, just work and, you know, activities. Nothing crazy. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, us too. The only exciting thing, and it was actually really fun, we just got back from our first travel baseball tourney. It was it was really fun. Yeah. I didn't want to really know what to expect, but um, it was a good time. The kids had fun, and they actually took second place. So it was really Congratulations. very cool. Thank you. Yeah, we don't have anything. We have chickens. That's right. They're getting bigger. Yeah, they're going to be going to the farm soon, but that's about all we have Aww. going on. The kids Lay are loving on. it, though. Yeah, they're fun. I don't take care of them. I just watch the kids now chase them around the yard. And it's actually really, really funny because the chickens are so fast that they can't catch them. Oh, my gosh. But don't they follow Stella around like she's like their mama? They do. But now when she when they know they have to go inside, mm-hmm. they run from her. It's oh, funny. no. They're like, no. And they're like, no, we don't want to go. Her. Yeah. <laughs> so they're funny. They're fun to watch. Aww. Well, I do have something I wanted to talk about when we were on our way back from the tournament, we passed the Delphi exit, which is not too far from where I grew up. And so, of course, I've been kind of following the Abby and Libby in their case in the uh, in Delphi, Indiana. And I'm sure most of the true crime community that listens to this knows exactly what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm really happy to see that they have a suspect finally in custody. And I whether or not this guy did it or not, he's he looks like a piece of trash. And yeah, it's a good thing that he's in custody, no he, matter yeah if he's responsible for the Delphi or not. But it just, you knew it had to be somebody local. So when they pick this guy up, it just it seems, fits. It seems to fit. Mm-hmm. I agree. I know they're not saying a whole lot. They're not. the The latest that I read was just yesterday where they interviewed the family and even the family, stepdad and brother, are saying this guy's absolutely capable of this and he needs to, he needs to go to jail for the rest of his life. Basically, if your family is saying that you're a piece We've of shit. We've talked about this before. Mm, you, you've done some things that, that you need to just. Yeah. You, you, you belong there for one reason or another. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Hopefully they, uh, I hope we get some answers fast. You know, I'm impatient in these situations yes. where there's an arrest and we don't hear anything for six months and there's not a trial for two years. Those things I know. Get to, they get it's, under my skin. It absolutely. But I mean, I know everyone was very, a lot of people didn't understand why the police were keeping so much under wraps because there's so much that they didn't share, but hopefully because they still have all those things quiet, they're going to be able to make this quick and get this guy for, for doing this. And hopefully they'll, and if he's got a kid in his basement, something tells me they'll find more. Uh, you know this. If isn't that it. makes sense, yeah, do you know like this isn't his first time. This this sick fuck has been doing this for probably the last five years, at least, if not longer. Well, yeah. I mean, if he is responsible for the Delphi, which obviously we don't know. I mean, he could have been doing it even before them. Yeah, those poor girls, Absolutely. and who knows how long. Absolutely. It sure sounded like whoever did that knew what they were doing they had a plan it wasn't like it wasn't like a panicked first time it was like oh i know exactly what i'm gonna Mm -hmm. do with you it was planned i mean it was or calculated yes you know experienced so well i am excited to hear your story today because i know i have no clue what you are going to be bringing me so let's get into it yeah so i went a little bit out of uh my comfort zone not that i'm super athlete or anything, but, uh, I ventured into an area that I don't know much about. So today I'm going to tell you about a professional skateboarder. Any idea who does it ring? Do you know of any professional skateboarders that you've heard that were in? I do, but I don't know. I don't know offhand of any that might have been involved in some kind of crime. Okay. So today we're going to talk about Mark Rogowski. Also okay. known as Gator. Is that? Okay. No, not no. familiar. I just remember God, there's a name that I, I've not as Coppice or something. Is that a name? 
From I, skateboarding? I've never. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I did my research on this, and I, I that just didn't remember come back in the day. I think he was like a big skateboarder, and I, that's the only name that I can that comes to mind right now, except for snowboarders and like Sean White and those guys. But Tony Hawk. Kind oh, of like, Tony Hawk. Yeah, kind of a big deal. Yeah, I see. <laughs> okay, I forgot about Tony. But Hawk. I didn't. I mean. I wasn't really familiar with the skateboarding world. I did have a Joe Cool skateboard when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was it, the, it, it was awful because it was like a beginner skateboard, so it had that this black stuff on the top. Do you yeah. know what I'm talking yeah, about? So I it was do. like the non skid, but I would always like try to. It would rip my skin off all the time. Or the know. skateboards that were so little you couldn't even put put your foot on. Oh, it. yeah, the little skin. Yeah, ones. the little blue ones. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I did that. Mine was a big black one, and it said. Um, Joe Cool on the top, and it had like Snoopy underneath it on the bottom. Oh, cool. <laughs> but that was like as, far, as much as I knew about yeah. skateboarding. I'm starting really to learn a little bit it. more because now it's cool again. And yeah, Ava has Stella's uh, saving for us. She's been saving for a skateboard. Ava's really good on it now. I mean, she's just flying down the street. I'm like, wow. Mm-hmm. When did you get so good? Make sure she wears a mouth guard. I don't know. It scares. She me. wears a helmet. That's yeah. <laughs> I just oh, God. I just see teeth every time oh, I see a skateboarder. God. I don't know why, but. All right, so Mark Ragazzi, he was also known as Gator. That was his nickname. Okay. I didn't see anywhere why, why? he got that no. nickname. I have no idea. Uh, he was born in Brooklyn, New York on August 10th, 1966. But after his parents divorced, they moved to Escondido, Florida. He was about three years old. And him and his mom and his older brother. He was naturally gifted in athletics he played just about everything but he started to hang out at the skate parks at about age of seven that's really young that is really young he being where he was in california many of his friends were into surfing but he still continued to hang at the skate parks he talks about not having much money as a kid and their surf kids were usually more wealthy it's a more expensive I could see that, yeah. And he said he he says that it was superficial too. Everyone mm-hmm. was worried about like what board you had and what clothes you were wearing. And skateboarding didn't have any of that fluff. It was mm-hmm. it's very gritty, kind of rebellious, right? You just grab your board and you go find some empty pools to skate in, yeah. which is illegal. So I got the vibe that he liked it because it was it was bad. Okay. Does that but- make- yeah, more street cred than yeah. Than yeah, you're not you're surfer. not a pretty surfer. Yeah, yeah. You're with like, like the, the hair flying in the wind, with like the suntan and right. The, you're whatever. like all gritty with your yeah. pants hanging down and no shirt. And yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. I see. It's super I can, opposite. I can completely picture both groups. Yeah. yeah. Um. So like I said, he was hanging at the local skate parks by the age of seven. When he's 12, 1978, he actually gets picked up by a local skate team and starts winning local events. So oh. that's, that's pretty wow. young. Yeah, that's, 12. that's still really young, yeah. Uh, by 1980, at the age of 14, he was pro. Wow. And in 1982, at the age of 16, he won his first major contest at the Canadian Amateur Skateboarding Championship in Vancouver. And in 1984, at the age of 18, he won his first national championship. So I wanted to give you that timeline to kind of let you know how quickly he rose to the top. He was good. Yeah. There's no question about it. And it happened at the exact same time as when skateboarding blew up. Okay. You know, remember that time in the 80s? Oh, yeah, I absolutely do. Yeah. Skateboarding was hot and it was gaining popularity and coverage. And they were really looking for faces to represent that community. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Gator was it. So he gets endorsement deals and sponsors and fame and wealth and problems. Mm. Oh, Gator. <laughs> but we'll get to those later. Uh, let's talk about his sponsors and endorsements. At the age of 18... He was making between $4,000 and $8,000 a month from the sale of clothing and skateboarding equipment. Wow. I mean, that, that's but a that's, lot back then. That's, yeah, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. Holy cow, for yeah. someone who's 18 years old. Yeah. At the age of 21, he secured a deal with Vision. Do you remember Vision Wear? It had Vision yeah. on it. Oh, yeah. It just said Vision, right? Yeah. Um, 
I'll show you the pics later. When you see all the pictures, like all of it just starts coming oh, back. I'm sure. It's I'm, so... I'm trying to bring like bring myself back to that time because oh. I know once I... you see the shirt, you're gonna be like, "Yep, that was it." Because they didn't have a whole lot. <laughs> no, it was no, just no, no. The same. Like all the skaters wore the yeah. same shirt, just different colors. <laughs> so true, though, and they didn't they didn't care about the style much. He was um, so from Vision, he was earning two dollars per skate deck and. They were selling approximately 7,000 skate decks a month. Oh, wow. Okay. So he's making about $14,000 a month from his skate decks only. So that's about $30,000 a month yeah. if that was right now. Yeah. When he's 21. Mm-hmm. I know, it's not. Well, it's a lot It's a lot very fast, especially for a kid who grew up with nothing. Yes. It's like, and you, you've, you've never been taught how to handle that. It's usually not a good thing. No, not at all. And he's also earning income on other things that Vision was selling with his name on it, right? Like the t-shirts. He also wore a beret, so they were selling berets. The beret is too much. Beret? A beret. He, you know, he is that personality that just thrived to be bold and different. Mm-hmm. You know that. that like type. always trying to set a new trend or yeah, something. Yeah, just yeah. that was his thing and it looks stupid, but whatever. They had stickers. They even had a fanny pack. Remember, this is the oh. 80s. So they had a fanny pack. I feel like those are coming back. They are coming back. Stella has a sequined one. Oh, boy. I, think... I don't think I'm ready for fanny packs. No, she uses it to train the dog, who doesn't even need to be trained. <laughs> like, that's where she keeps the dog treats. It's kind of funny. But anyways, so it's the 80s. Skateboarding is on fire, and Gator is at the very top. He is the face of vertical skating, and... He's also the bad boy. He He's in all kinds of trouble. He's flying all over the world to compete and do autographs. And there's always tons of fans and parties. And like I said, problems. Mm-hmm. I can see it. He's getting arrested. He's obnoxious. He's cocky. He's arrogant. And he loves it. He's even quoted saying, I love getting arrested. Oh, no. Okay. He talks about how... He would rob 7-Elevens naked. What? I don't know. He's, you just have to watch some of his obnoxiousness. I can show it to you later. Yes. And it was, like, entertaining. That was, like, a good time to him. He was that kid. He had too much money and too much freedom. <sighs> it reminds me of that show, Jack. I was just going to say that. Yeah, yes. Right? Exactly. Like how they just... They're like, hey, how much trouble can and can we cause and get into? Mm-hmm. And, and they enjoyed the rise made. they would get out of yeah. people. Absolutely. In 1987, at a skate competition in Scottsdale, Arizona, Gator meets two young women. They're 17, and they are there because they're boy crazy and infatuated with the skateboarders. This is Brandy McLean and Jessica Bergstein. Jessica had actually met a fellow skater there by the name of Christian Hoysoy. Do you remember that name? It sounds familiar. He was also he yeah. into some trouble, but not like Gator. Mm-hmm. And the two of them, actually, so Jessica and Christian were hanging out, and they introduced Brandy to Gator. Okay. Okay. So Brandy and Gator hung out the whole weekend, and they fell in love. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Sure they did, right? Super best. <laughs> Super best. <laughs> and after... Uh, So Brandy was from Arizona. After Gator left, he was calling or sending Brandy love letters from San Diego. And then he flies Brandy out to see him. She's 17 and he's 21. She's flying out to San Diego to be with him. He's flying her to competitions to meet up with him. And after a few months, she even moves in with him. No, okay. She's not even 18 yet. Mm-hmm. So I think she need, I don't even know if she was done with school. What, what can you do when you're in love? I don't <laughs> know. But if that's my child, I would probably... I, this is also a different time. I mean, it's not that long ago, but it was the 80s. What yeah. happens in the 80s stays in the 80s? I know. I, don't know. I try to give it grace, but... Yeah. yeah. It's just really scary to mm-hmm. think that this kid and his hard partying ways now has i don't know whatever okay so gator bought a ranch uh i don't know if you remember this as well but tony hawk had a ranch in the mountains Mm -hmm. where a bunch of his skateboarding 
peeps would come. Like he had all these big ramps and everything. Mm-hmm. So Gator following Tony Hawk's lead. Yeah. He also bought a ranch in that area and had a bunch of ramps installed. But Brandy was bored. So just after being there a few months, they sold it and moved to a condo in the upscale beach community of Carlsbad. They were only about a block from the ocean. Okay, she's 17. Living, I just, I want to live a block from the ocean. I know. <laughs> I know. I, it just sounds problematic. And it sounds problematic, yet kind of amazing. I know. Right? Yeah, if you yeah. were to go to the beach to read, maybe not do the things they were doing. Mm. But the two of them made their way all around Carlsbad and the San Diego party scene. They became pretty much the it couple on the beach. And honestly, at this point in time, it sounds like the only thing they did was party. Yeah. Well, they didn't have to go to work. They, no, they just, she just traveled with him to his skate comps. And he, he was skated. just making all kinds yeah. of money for doing whatever. So here's a quote there that I no found. There were life experiences. No. But here you go, kids. Have some money and do what you want. Oh, I, I want to know who was man- helping him. I, well, obviously, probably no one. But so this is a quote that I read from Brandy. We would get high every night. We didn't do coke every night, but we did do bong hits. We'd go to the sandbar at the end of his street and get fucked up. Then we'd hang out in his jacuzzi, get drunk off our asses, and go in and have wild sex all night. Does that sound like the life of a 17-year-old? No, definitely. <laughs> or a 21-year-old? No. Oh, praise Jesus. So Gator was obsessed with Brandy, and he spent all his money on her. She went everywhere with him. He would fly her all around the world. I mean, Europe, anywhere he was, she was. She brought, bought her cars. He just wanted to make her happy. Mm-hmm. Gator's brother called her a gold digger. <laughs> But he also said that when you were around them, it made you felt like they were in love. Okay. So you make the call. I don't know. Right. It could be either way. They're so young. I don't even know if they know. I would not have been able to make a decision at 17 to get married or to be, no. You just don't, again, there's no life experience. You don't yeah. know enough. They also became pretty much the a couple on skateboarding. They modeled together. They were on cover of magazines they were even in um tom petty's free fallen video do you remember the skateboarder in the video with the girl Mm -hmm. cheering him on like Mm -hmm. that was them yeah i remember that because i still will never stop giving my dad shit for this because (laughs) that's the i was little i was really little i was probably six or seven i don't know i'm guessing and i remember asking my dad about that song like dad this is i love this song like what who, who sings it? He's like, ah, oh, it's probably some one-hit wonder, right? And then, <laughs> oh, my God. I would never let him let that down. He's like, I never said that. I'm like, no, you did. You would be about that age, too, yeah. according yeah. to, like, the timeline. We were coming so back from, like, some, like, Easter egg thing. So I was little. You know, we were, like, picking up Easter eggs in, like, somebody's lawn. <laughs> some one-hit wonder. <laughs> one-hit wonder. That goes on to. Tom Petty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> it's too funny. So now it's getting into the early 90s and a new type of skateboard skateboarding is introduced do you remember this transition i'm trying to remember i remember it vaguely because i wasn't into it but i remember it being really popular right with tony hawk and all the big ramps and all this Mm -hmm. stuff and like the coming of skate parks well then i kind of switched over to street skate okay and gator was the king of vertical skating i mean you could see when you watched i watched his videos Mm -hmm. he's so comfortable it's natural to him. I would have no teeth. Oh, and no. And then it would be no. a full body cast. But Never. he's super comfortable with it. But he couldn't street skate to save his life. Oh. There's video proof. I watched it. It's bad. He just... He just couldn't figure it out. He just couldn't do it. And so street, street skating became popular because it was all these urban obstacles, right? They would use curbs and garbage mm-hmm. cans and stairways. Oh, yeah. So it's... It's, it was actually, now that, now that you're saying that, I remembered some of these videos and it was super cool to watch because they would just like randomly jump they would, and like right, slide they would be like going down the street and, and all of a sudden mm-hmm. they're like on a rail and then they jump over a garbage can, right? Yeah. So this is more realistic, I guess you could say, and more widespread because you didn't need to have access to a ramp. To a ramp, right. More people could do it just in their 
yeah, on their street. Yeah, anywhere. And it was, and it still had um, that bad boy. I don't want to say bad boy because girls can skate too, but it still had that rebellious mm-hmm. edge because you couldn't skate on public property. So you're constantly getting shooed away. All these signs are coming up. You can't skate here. You know, so they were always oh, yeah. like running from the police and still, so it still had that edge. Knowing that all this was coming, Gator was starting to stress out. Because he could fear, he could feel it. He was fearing what was, yeah, he could the writing shift. was on the wall. Yeah. yeah, he was no longer, that's not the way they were going. Vision was like, sorry, you're out. Well, actually, he was with, so he was with Vision his whole career, but Vision started filing for bankruptcy. Oh. He was sweating, and something tells me he didn't do much financial planning. Never. <laughs> Probably not. No, I... So I don't know if I made it clear before, but Gator partied and he partied hard. I mean, if he loved getting arrested, he was, (laughs) I can imagine. And many of his friends thought he had a drinking problem. But when all of this started to happen Mm -hmm. and he knew his career was kind of coming to an end, he started drinking even heavier. It's 1990 and Gator is in Germany with the Vision skateboarding team for the World Cup. So this is kind of at that point where the transition was happening. And there's a few different versions of this story, but they all, I don't know which one's true, but they all have the same ending. So Mm -hmm. I don't know if it really necessarily matters. One story says that the Vision team manager was looking out the window and he saw Gator climbing a construction crane. That's right, a construction crane. (laughs) Gosh. And then was diving down from a second story hotel window. Nothing could come of that. Another story says that he was pushed out the hotel window. And then a third story says that he actually jumped out the window, convinced he could fly. Oh, God. Okay. In all the stories, Gator's inebriated. Apparently, he had gone, like, party hopping on his own that night and was just off the hook, for a lack of better words. Wow. This accident nearly killed him. No matter how he had fallen, he landed on a wrought iron fence. Oh. Oh. Impaling his neck, face, and thumb, like his hand. When he woke up in the hospital in Germany, he had no idea what had happened. He didn't remember anything. I don't know how you could have survived that. That sounds terrible. Really awful. Yes. Well, and then I think, I think I remember we had talked about this before. It, don't they say that you could, you can actually die from falling from a height as tall as you are? Right. Anything, anything as tall as you mm-hmm. is considered a category drama. Yeah. So. I know um, people are like, oh, second story, that's not too bad, but no, that's... It's really bad. bad. And you impaled yourself on a red yeah, iron uh, fence. That's really not that good. A, not good that alone, you. though, without the impaling. Yes, good right, God. exactly. Yeah. So he spends the next... He gets fixed up in Germany. He comes back to San Diego. He spends the next few months um, getting fixed up, working with plastic surgery, surgeons trying to fix his face. Because if I didn't mention this before, his plan B was a modeling career. Mm. No, Gator, no. (laughs) I don't know how else to say it. But here's where a huge transition happens. Because after his accident, Gator found God. Mm -hmm. He says, Jesus Christ spoke to me through that accident. I was a blind dude, but now I can see. I just need to hear what happens next after that. Right? Mm -hmm. You go from... I have nothing right now. No. So Gator had been born again. He connects with a gentleman named Augie Constantino, a.k.a. the skateboard minister. Augie lives a few blocks from Gator. Mm -hmm. And he is an ex-surfer slash skateboarder turned born again Christian after his own life-changing accident. So Augie was a professional surfer and he was in Hawaii and he was drinking with some other surfers. After a party, he decided that he was going to play chicken with one of his friends in a car. Not smart. No. 
when his friend hit him head on doing 45 miles per hour. Oh. So he severed his right quadricep, which in return he could never surf again, obviously. Yeah. No. But the fact that you lived from that. I don't know. So he decided that this was a Did message they from God. Do you know? It didn't say anything about his friend. Mm. But he lived. Yeah. I mean, he's the skateboard minister now. Mm. This was his message from God, and he was going to devote his life to Christ. Okay. And this guy would become Gator's new spiritual advisor, and together they would spread the word. Mm-hmm. Sounds legit. Totally. Mm-hmm. I mean, you always go from the mm-hmm. bad boy who's flipping off the camera in every single picture who loves getting arrested to (laughs) to, preaching i mean so he he also changes his name he drops the rogowski because he never really had a father anyway okay and he changes his name to gator mark anthony okay as in the singer I can't. I know. I told you you would like this one. I'm trying not to. I mean, it's tragic. You're trying not to laugh. Because you can't laugh. I mean, you can't help but to laugh at how ridiculous it is. I mean, it sounds Where is the adult leader in your life? Where is someone that's going to pull you aside and say, you know what? (laughs) These aren't. This isn't working. You need to come home now. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, somebody needed to put him in his room. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> like, exactly. you're done. You need a timeout. You, you need, need a, a you need a major timeout. Yes, but I mean, I'm not, and I'm not I'm not laughing about the, the finding fact that God. finding God no, and no. all of that and preaching because you know I've we've seen some really good things happen from people who have made really bad choices and then they flip their life around and they've done really amazing things. So I'll reserve judgment until you tell me the rest. That's not really. I think just the. I'll go on. I'll go on. I'll let you. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, definitely not knocking the God thing. No, but I just didn't want anybody to think that that's. I think the, that when we I were, tell you but... like what he did and how it plays out, I think mm-hmm. you'll get what I'm coming from. So, gotcha. um, Augie, the skateboard minister says, I introduced Mark to a personal God, a God, the father. Mark never had a father to speak of. I showed Christ to him, and the Bible says he's our own true father. So, of course, it appealed to Mark. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. He needed... He needed that father figure, and he was willing to get it wherever he could find it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, with the downfall of his career and his new love for Jesus, Gator decides that he's going to start covering his boards and his apparel with religious symbols. Because you know the skateboarding community who loves you for your bad boy image is going to totally love that. Mm. No. No. And he begins preaching to skaters and surfers, basically anyone who would listen about his secret friend, a.k.a. Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. So he would go to the beach and everyone would be like, Gator's here. And then he would say, can I tell you about my secret friend? Oh. You can imagine how well this went over. No, it's not going to be received. No. no. Talk about an official career-ending decision. Yeah. But it's going to get worse. Don't worry. It's not over yet. I just... Poor guy. Well, nobody wants you to come and shove what your beliefs down their throat. So but you can that's be, you can be born again, but you yeah. can't... You can't just, like, make people listen to you yeah. everywhere and hold them hostage. That's and also not. pass judgment Correct. for anyone who does yeah. not. So... How do you think Brandy's feeling right now? Like, she's probably, like, taking, like, taking those steps back, you know? Like, just, like, backing away slowly. She's slowly packing her bags. <laughs> yeah. Putting them in the car. One at a time. How do I get both cars with me that he purchased? Mm-hmm. Uh, so she's super confused. They went from this, like, hard partying lifestyle to Gator saying that they can't have sex because they're not married. Hmm. She's like, what are you talking about? There's your out, Brandy. Like, three weeks ago, we just did 13 lines of Coke, and yeah. Yeah, she's so confused, the yeah. poor girl. And that, and you know. Well, when she, you're not ready to go from one lifestyle to another, you're not, you can't just. You, just do that. You, know. you can't just, and you have to be ready for it. It mm-hmm. can't be someone else's decision, no. like, pushed on you. So she's out. 
Mm-hmm. She's had enough. She's She moves out and goes and moves in with her mother and stepfather, who now also live in San Diego. I don't know how that happened, but they're there in California. Now, as the godly man that he is, Gator decides he's going to start stalking and harassing Brandy. Because hmm. mm-hmm. that's what you do. Uh, he would leave terrible messages on her answering machine, like almost growling. They're very mm-hmm. disturbing. Mm-hmm. Calling her names, telling her that she's going to go to hell. Brandy's house is broken into through her bedroom window. And the only things stolen are things that Gator had given her. Well, I don't know who did it. Yeah, I have no, no <laughs> clue. <laughs> no. Through all this, Brandy still has hopes that they're going to get back together. So she invited him to take her out to dinner. That is correct. She invited him to take her out to dinner. Because I'm sure she didn't have any money. Mm, mm-hmm. Isn't that funny, though? Yeah. When I read it, I had to read it like three times because yeah. I was trying to wrap my head around it. All right. I will allow you. Yeah. Do you want to take me out to dinner? To take me to dinner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But she's not a gold digger. I don't know. So, you know, what I, like there's some things yeah. like I can go back and forth. But maybe she just got used to that lifestyle and didn't know how because she never had to mm-hmm. do anything to take care of herself. Yeah. They start arguing as soon as they get in the car. Gator's super pissed at her because she's dating someone else. So when he decided that he's going to be born again and they're not partying anymore and Brandy's like, well, I want to party. He told her to go and find some surfer guy to party with. So that's exactly what she she did. did. Yeah, Yeah. because that's what we do when we're young and immature and Mm -hmm. stupid. So she found this cute, hot surfer guy that she would party with. And Gator did not handle this well. He's super, super pissed. So... In the car, this is what Brandy says that Gator told her. She's telling us about her experience with him. And Mark was furious. He was driving out in the middle of this nowhere road out where my parents live when he turned to me with this really scary, serious look in his eye. His voice got all deep and, you know, he sounded like the devil. He says, you know what? I should take you out to the desert right now. I should drive you out right in the middle of the night and beat the shit out of you and leave you there. And I would get away with it because everybody would know that you deserved it. Whoa. Whoa. That's some anger. Yeah. Yeah. She's crying. She tells him, my mom knows that I'm with you. My mom knows what's going on. Demands to be taken home and he does. But she's scared. She's bad Mm. up. She can't do this anymore. She actually moves to New York without telling anyone but her immediate family. She doesn't even tell her best friend, who still lives in Arizona, Jessica. Mm. Jessica's planning to move to California. Mm. So she shows up in San Diego a few weeks later and asks Gator to show her around because there's no Brandy. And Jessica and Brandy were basically twins. Do you remember at that age, like when you were in college, all of you looked alike? Yeah. You know, you have the same style. You have all that. So Gator agrees that he's going to show Jessica around the San Diego area. On Wednesday, March 20th, 1991, Jessica meets Gator for lunch and they do some sightseeing. After showing her around, Gator invites her back to his condo. They pick up some movies and a few bottles of wine and they hang out. And I read somewhere too that um, they got high, but they both didn't get high. Maybe just Mm -hmm. Jessica got high. I don't know. But if you... You know, he's a born-again Christian, so he doesn't drink. Right. And this is where Mm -hmm. I am remembering the The story. story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so after they're done hanging out, Gator's going to drive her home. He goes out to his car to check for something. And when he comes back in, she's looking at a picture of him on his living room wall. I also read she was putting her shoes on. I read two different Mm -hmm. stories. I don't know which is which. But you know how, like, when you're waiting for someone and it's not your house, you just kind of walk around and look at things? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I could see either happening. Gator sneaks up behind her with a metal steering wheel lock. Do you remember the club? Yes. The club. I remember that. And hits her in the back of the head Mm -hmm. two or three times. Mm -hmm. She falls to the floor bleeding. I mean, it's bleeding so much that... It's like soaking through the carpet. I don't what I don't I have no words. I don't know how it even got here. She's somewhat conscious, somewhat unconscious. He handcuffs her. Where did the handcuffs come from? 
He handcuffs her and drags her to his bedroom on the second floor where he shackles her to the bed and he cuts off all her clothes. He rapes her for what he estimates later in his confession as two to three hours. Oh my God. Saying that he committed every sexual act he could think of. He had done the worst things sexually he could think of as he was putting in all his rage and anger into her. Is what he says. Mm. Jessica is still conscious enough that she's begging Gator to stop. And then she decides, like, fuck it, I'm going for it. And she just starts screaming. Mm -hmm. And she just starts screaming as loud as she possibly can to try to get anyone to hear. And Gator freaks out because he can't. Oh, so he just needs to... To make her stop. Make her stop. Make her be quiet. Yeah. So he pulls out... um, from his closet, a surfboard bag and stuffs her in it. And then she's still screaming. So he puts his hand over her mouth until she stops breathing. Mm. I know. It's, I just, you don't see any of it coming. No. And just to use her as like a surrogate to Brandy. That's exactly. Oh my, you're right. You're spot what the on. Hell? You're spot on. So he puts Jessica's body, her cut up clothing, the handcuffs and the club in the trunk of his car. He drives her body about two hours away into a desert area called Shell Canyon, where he buries her naked body in a shallow grave. Dude didn't even like dig up like four inches of anything. Like it's like hardly buried. On his way back um, in random areas, he tosses away her bloodstained clothes, his sheets, the club. You know, all these things randomly out the window as he's driving back. He stops to rent a carpet steamer to clean his carpet. And then he also flips his mattress to hide the blood. I don't know. It's all, it just went sideways really fast, I feel like. Yeah, it sounds like it. But when Jessica stops calling after leaving for California, her father starts to panic. He suddenly doesn't hear from her. He contacts the San Diego Police Department, but he's unsatisfied with what they're doing. He reports Mm -hmm. his daughter missing, but he doesn't think they're doing anything. So he actually decides that he's going to fly to San Diego to find Jessica himself. He plasters missing person posters of Jessica with her picture all over the area. Mm -hmm. He tries to talk with people that she knew in that area. He even talks to Gator. And what does he say? Gator said he didn't know anything. Didn't see her. Wished her luck and shook his hand. Or wished him luck and shook his hand. Mm -hmm. That's really just disturbing. Yeah. Her father left the area with no answers, and it would take two more months before there would be any leads. This part is crazy. Not that the whole story isn't crazy, but this, I think, is just really crazy. So... Gator still being the godly man that he is Mm -hmm. after murdering and raping and burying Mm -hmm. someone. I was keeping that in the back of my mind. Yeah, he's he's still godly. So Mm -hmm. remember, I told you how him and his friend Augie they would preach their message to the locals. So the two of them would frequently harass. I mean, spread their message at a Seven Eleven, just a few blocks from Gator's home. So this was a hot spot for younger kids. And the 7-Eleven comes back. The irony, right? So he used to run around naked mm-hmm. at the 7-Eleven. Now he's preaching. Now he's preaching. In this front of poor the 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven company is like, <laughs> leave us alone. <laughs> leave us alone, Gator. So this is a hot spot. The kids like to hang out there because it's next to the beach. There's a 7-Eleven and then there's a pizza shop right next door. Hmm. Okay. And Augie, you know, the skateboard minister, even talks about using Gator as bait. He said the younger skaters and the younger kids were willing to listen to just about anything for a chance to meet Gator. Okay. So he that. was like the showstopper. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So they're at 7-Eleven spreading their word when Augie sees a young girl wearing a mini skirt and he tells her, go put some clothes on and come back. I'd like to talk to you about Christ. And I'm sure she just hopped right to it. (laughs) She did, right? So she ignores him, Mm -hmm. and he points to a poster of a missing girl and says, what about that girl? She had nothing to worry about, but where is she now? She could have been involved in drugs or pornography. Maybe she's dead. 
So the girl ignores him. Mm -hmm. Whatever. See you tomorrow when you're going to be here. You know, crazy person jumps into the car and leaves. But Gator's standing there and Gator's just blank and he's silent. Because the poster Mm -hmm. was of Jessica. And he's with like this, he's with his person that he... Looks he's up to very and, conflicted because yeah. he's like living a double mm-hmm. a double life here, right? Almost like confession time. And that's what happens. Mm. So about a week later, Gator confesses to Augie saying, Remember that girl on the poster? She's the one I killed. So he had previously told him he killed somebody? He made or a no? no. So he made a reference to being a um I'm not good with the Bible. He made a reference to being a person in the Bible, and that person had killed. Ah, uh, got you. So I think, I can't remember exactly what the yeah. Bible reference was. Um, So I think that was when he was referring to himself at that point. That's, I think, was he was trying to give trying to say, his friend Augie, like, a, an in. Yeah. He was trying to get out of it with a Bible reference to say that... He did something, but he didn't do something. Yeah, that was his form of a confession. So, Augie convinces Gator to go to the police, and he drove him to the police department on May 5th. Um, So, this is May 5th, 1991. But he also decides to give him a little bit of legal advice, and he tells Gator that he doesn't need a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sure that's the best advice, but... Gator sucks, so I don't care what legal right, advice he right. gets, but I think that's funny because basically they were still going with, you know, God is your... I, yeah. I wasn't sure if that's where we were going or if he was like, dude, you need to go down, so I'm going to give you this piece of advice and... No, he was saying... Like, he was really... Like, the only person okay. you're accountable to is God, okay. you know. he. And I read, like, three paragraphs that he wrote about mm-hmm. why he said that, but nah, we don't need to hear from him anymore. <laughs> I'm done with him. <laughs> Gator confesses to Jessica's murder, but what he doesn't know is that her body had already been found. Mm. It was discovered by campers on April 10th, but it was so badly decomposed that it couldn't be identified. Okay. So Gator led the police to where he had buried Jessica's body, and that's when they knew everything yeah. came together. While investigating Gator's home, the police found evidence of Jessica's blood in the carpet padding and on the floorboards. And then, I assume the mattress, but they never mentioned the mattress. It has to be. He flipped it over. Mm -hmm. They also found the receipt for the carpet cleaner because he saved all his receipts because his accountant told him to. Hmm. (laughs) Isn't that funny? Kind of. Just because it's like, all right. Like he like he was so stupid that like this is where my receipts go. Like he's got like a special like pocket where his receipts and he just put it in there I don't know I thought that was just handcuffed receipt it's one of those things like he did a terrible thing but you have to laugh at at some parts otherwise you won't be able to live with yourself hearing these things you have to laugh you have to poke fun at him because he's an idiot and a bad person I mean that's yeah if you you know what I mean obviously I do um and in his confession he says that Jessica's murder was a misplaced act of revenge towards Brandy and he says that Jessica was the mold Brandy was made out of. Mm. So you were right on. Mm. It was some sort of trigger or... just yeah. He also talks about... He couldn't about get to Brandy, so he let all of it out on her. On her, her friend, oh who had no idea what was no going clue. on. He also talks about how he couldn't let the people in the neighborhood down because he you know he's this godly man and mm-hmm. now he had this I don't know what he calls her basically like a sex kitten he's got this tramp in his house who's drinking and doing drugs and wants to have mm-hmm. sex with him which nowhere before he raped her doesn't mention any of that but basically he was saying like all these things were happening and He didn't know how to get out of it because he was afraid that some of the kids in the neighborhood would see that he had wine bottles and he's delusional, Mm -hmm. complete like delusion. So a little fun fact for you that in California, when committing murder during rape, it's considered special circumstances and it warrants the death penalty or life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. I like it. So yeah, it's good. His douchey lawyer 
first of all, he couldn't get anyone to represent him from what I read. And he got actually like a court appointed lawyer, but the guy was still a douchebag. And he actually tried to challenge Gator's confession, his own client's confession. He appealed the rape charge, stating the body was so decomposed that there was no signs of forcible rape. Why are you actively trying to... You... He confessed. Yeah, no. He, he told everybody he everything. Said, I'm with, guilty. I this, did this. This is what I did. And gave, like, the detailed story that I gave you came from him. Nobody else would know what happened. But yeah, there's no evidence of it, so you can't prove that it happened. Uh, he also, he victim shamed Jessica. He called her a slut and claimed to have a list of people she had sadomasochistic sex with, including the entire University of Arizona basketball team and, and some pros. Don't need to go on. I'm not even going to go on to what else he said, because are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> That, I don't care if she slept with, like, one million people. That doesn't give you a right to rape and murder her. Please tell me. Okay. It was all, the appeal was dismissed. Okay. Thank. Can we toss this guy's ass in jail, too, just for being a douchebag? Can you, how do you sleep at night? I have no idea. I can't handle the victim shaming. That just makes me so angry. This also really lit up the skateboard community. Gator Mm. went from the bad boy to born again to murderer. murderer. They were very confused. They were with Brandy like, what is going on? They were were worried that they were already viewed as like anti-authority, right? Because they were always... We don't want you guys here. Yes. Right? Because then they were all labeled as... They were fearful how for yeah. how the sport was going to suffer. Yeah. And so they started spreading the word and, like, there was bumper stickers and slogans that said, like, skateboarding is not a crime, murder is. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to be associated with him. Did it help? I think so. Okay. I mean... Yeah. Well, you just... You know... Skateboarding went on without us yeah. really knowing about this, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it did. It did. I just... I always remembered it being a challenge for people to... Find a place to skate that they were allowed to skate. I think that it I, still is. I mean, yeah. I know we have some skate parks here. Yeah, we do. But, I mean, you can't. Everywhere you... I mean, you can't even rollerblade in the city. No, I mean, I guess you, you can't. You can't do anything. I just anything. didn't know if that was another part of just, like, an image thing. Or, I'm sure that it know. was. They were... I'm sure that it was, for sure. So, January 19th... Or, in January of 1992... Gator pled guilty to first-degree murder and rape, allowing him to avoid the death penalty or life without a chance of parole. On March 6, 1992, he was sentenced to 31 years to life in prison, six years for forcible rape, and 25 years for um, first-degree murder. Still not enough, but... Mm. There was extra security there because they believed that Jessica's father, Stephen, was going to attempt to harm Gator. This guy was hot. Mm -hmm. They thought he was going to, like, come in and shoot him. Like, they had special metal detectors and stuff up. I'm not even, I'm not even sure. Even if he did, I wouldn't be angry. So. Oh, no, I was saying I'm not even sure that that would keep either of us out of there. I'm sure we would find a way to get to that guy. You shook I'd be his hand. Somebody under hand. the table to make a shake. Yes, you shook It'd be his over. hand. Have you seen my daughter? No, yeah. I hope you find her in a handshake. Yeah, no. That right now. Mm-mm. You're done. You're going down. He's a terrible, terrible. It's disgusting what he did. I. You know, like that whole like, take him out back. You know. Oh yeah. I've no. That's a whole nother podcast <laughs> episode, but. So Mark, Anthony, Gator, Rogowski, I don't know what you want to call him, depending on what he's going by, but he uh, was serving his sentence at Donovan State Prison in California. He was granted parole in December of 2019. Really? But. But. And on April 27th of 2020, Governor Gavin Newsom said, nope. Ah. And he reversed the decision, stating that Gator needs to gain a deeper understanding of his crimes. 
Nice. That's not the first time I've heard of Newsom doing something that I was really happy about. Right? Yeah. Good job, buddy. I'm so mm-hmm. happy to hear that. So I read that he's eligible for another parole suitability hearing coming up here in June. Mm-hmm. Next month. He needs to stay. He does. He needs to stay for life. I have so much to show you. So there's actually YouTube videos of now. He's spreading his word in prison. Oh, come on. So I have him talking. I can show you videos of him talking to other prison inmates, trying to counsel them. He's got a couple of degrees, of course, because he's been in there. Wow. You know how it goes. I do. Well, he's in the right place. And more people find God in prison than anywhere else. Yeah, he can just keep spreading his secret friend message. Yeah. So a little bit about Brandy, I thought this is a little spicy. We always need a little spice. So Mm -hmm. she moved to New York and she lived in a penthouse apartment on the Upper East Side. Supposedly working as a flower arranger, so like a florist. Mm -hmm. But she was actually listed in the Heidi Fly scandal. No way. Yes. I've always wanted to look into that a little bit more. We yes. We have to do something like that. We have to. Next. When I started digging into it, that yeah. was like a side rabbit hole I had oh, to get out. Yeah. I had a madam story that I had written down too from before that I, it wasn't, it wasn't Heidi Fleiss, but it was a different one. So we may have to. Yes. So I don't know. Isn't that crazy? So like she's not a gold digger, but she ends up working for Heidi for Fleiss. Heidi Fleiss. It's. Eek. Uh, or she was so used to that, like the, that lifestyle of money and yeah. that's the only way she could get it right yeah. could go on yeah. could go either way i just thought that was crazy and then um as of january 2021 she's married and has four kids and i believe from what i could see she's living in tennessee so hmm. jessica's remains was they were laid to rest in a family plot in georgia okay. uh Skateboard minister, he's still out there yeah. spreading his word. He seems harmless, but yeah, I mean, at least he drove Gator to yeah. the police station. He he made the right call there, making him turn himself in. So you know, I and know. that's the uh, it's a sad story. It is. Well, I mean, just can you even imagine? You... I feel like it was like fast forward. He grew to fame and it's so fast it all just i mean 10 years and it's like boom his life would just happen and over yeah oh poor jessica i just i'm thinking of her just she's just she has no clue she's, she's just going to look for her so friends. innocent in the whole situation yeah. no idea and poor brandy even yeah her I mean having to live with the fact that your best friend was murdered you didn't tell her you were leaving yeah but because of this guy that you were terrified of yeah so maybe if you, you would know, have said something sure. she wouldn't reached out to him yeah so I, there's a lot of a lot mm-hmm. of guilt there as well oh. yeah but I mean bits and pieces of that story started to sound familiar even though I didn't remember it in its entirety I just remembered little well, because the headlines I remember the headlines back in the day and I said like, professional skateboarder killed girlfriend, but it wasn't his girlfriend. So yeah. they didn't even, the media didn't even have it right when it happened. That happens a lot, right? They just try to rush the story out and they don't even know. I think they just they're... assume that if he killed some girl, yeah. that it must have been. And to us, we're kind of like, okay, well, now we know, now we know the real story, but I know, you know, when, when Billy even talks to me about um, his cousin Chad and how his girl, like, I tell you about his girlfriend. We might have to do her story as well. Although it's a cold case, they don't even know what happened to her. And he he gets really hot because he goes back to some of the articles and he's like, that's wrong, that's wrong. It wasn't, it was a, so. This one, like I, this case, like I said, had, there was, there was even a couple places where it says that Gator led the police to her body. But I know for a fact, that was not the case. Like, I, uh, that's the one thing that I know was not true. He led them to where she was buried, but not that no. her body had already been found. But, I mean, like I said, like, how he fell out the window, what she was doing when he bludgeoned her in the this head. This is just the stuff that we come There's across all, these and bits. all the time, yeah, where we're like, well, you know, we'll just tell you what we found because we did the research and we tried to fact check it, and sometimes you get three facts that are 
very controversial, but at least like I appreciated that you told me all three things that you found because it's like, well, it depends on who saw it and whose story you believe, you know? Exactly. Well, you have, you have an athlete story too, right? I do. And look what we ran. I don't even know anymore. Yeah. Um, Awesome. Well, I can't wait to hear what you have next. And if you like us, Yes, please hop on, rate and review. Um, I've noticed that we haven't had we haven't had very much movement in the rating and reviewing going on. But I, I also think a lot of people just don't think to do it. Or maybe you don't have Apple. You have another, you know, you listen somewhere else that doesn't allow you to do that. Um, but if you do have Apple, even if you listen somewhere else and you enjoy us, please head over there, hop on, and just click the click the five stars. I'll just let you know. <laughs> That's all well, you need to do. I think you can you know. leave reviews on Facebook if you're old like us and you still yeah. have Facebook. I think you can review us on Facebook even. Okay. So I didn't even know about that. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, I mean, you know, if you like us or you want to do the rate, you know, head over and click on the, the star rating. It just takes a second. You don't have to leave a review if you don't, you know, if you don't want to. But the ratings help. They help, you know, boost us in the in the podcast section so that people can find us easier. So that's really, that's really helpful. Yeah, or follow us. We mm-hmm. always try to give uh, some images that go along with the case. We try to be as respectful as possible to obviously family and victims. Yeah, absolutely. And raise some awareness. But we always try to share a little bit more about what we were talking about that week. So find us on Instagram mm-hmm. or Facebook. Yep, the Wicked Ones podcast everywhere. That's where that's where you'll find us. All right, until next time. Yeah. Have a good week. See you later.